Hello, history enthusiasts. You're about to embark on a fascinating journey through time, as this video marks the first installment of a four-part series exploring the dynamic history of Canada from 1840 to 1896. This era laid the foundation for the nation we know today, filled with pivotal moments, daring visions, and the unyielding spirit of its people. From political unions and rebellions to the gold rush and the dawn of autonomy, we'll uncover the stories that shaped Canada's destiny. So buckle up for a deep dive into the past, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating content as we unravel the history of Canada from 1840 until today. In 1840, Canada was at a crossroads, grappling with the aftermath of the rebellions of 1837 in Upper and Lower Canada. These rebellions were sparked by frustrations over misgovernment and a lack of responsible local governance, leading to widespread unrest. In response, the British government, aiming to quell dissent and streamline administration, passed the Act of Union. This act effectively merged Upper and Lower Canada into the province of Canada, a single entity with a united legislature. The merger was seen as a way to assimilate the French-speaking population of Lower Canada and impose English language and laws, but it also laid the foundation for democratic reforms by introducing a semblance of responsible government. This pivotal move towards unification was driven by economic considerations, political expediency, and the desire to create a more governable and stable colony that could contribute more effectively to the British Empire. The Act of Union set the stage for the Great Migration, a period characterized by an influx of immigrants, primarily from the British Isles into Canada. This migration was propelled by several factors, economic hardship in Europe, especially the Great Famine in Ireland, the promise of cheap land, and the British government's policies encouraging emigration to alleviate population pressures at home. These immigrants embarked on arduous journeys across the Atlantic, seeking better lives in Canada's vast and fertile lands, they settled predominantly in Upper Canada, now Ontario, and the Maritimes transforming the demographic and social landscape. The infusion of human capital was instrumental in developing agriculture, industry, and infrastructure, thereby accelerating economic growth and diversifying the cultural fabric of Canada. Confederation, realized on July 1, 1867, was a monumental event in Canadian history, born out of a complex interplay of factors. The province of Canada was politically deadlocked, with equal representation from Canada West and Canada East leading to legislative gridlock. Meanwhile, external threats and pressures, such as potential American expansionism following the U.S. Civil War and the desire for economic development underscored the need for a stronger, united political entity. The Charlottetown and Quebec conferences saw delegates from the province of Canada New Brunswick and Nova Scotia come together to forge a new nation. The British North America Act, 1867, created a federal dominion that united these diverse regions under a central government while allowing for provincial autonomy in local matters, laying the groundwork for a country that could navigate the challenges of geography, diversity, and external pressures. The Red River resistance of 1869-70 highlighted the tensions inherent in Canada's westward expansion. The Canadian government's purchase of Rupert's land from the Hudson's Bay Company was seen as a direct threat by the Metis and other inhabitants of the Red River settlement who were not consulted about the transfer of their homeland. Under the leadership of Louis Riel, the Metis established a provisional government to negotiate with Canada, asserting their rights and demanding protections for their land and culture. This event was a stark reminder of the complexities of integrating diverse regions and peoples into a young nation. The resistance culminated in the Manitoba Act, creating the province of Manitoba and guaranteeing rights for the Miti, although these promises were not fully honored, leading to further discontent. The establishment of the Northwest Mounted Police, NWMP, in 1873 was a response to the lawlessness in the Western territories, exacerbated by the whiskey trade and the absence of formal governance structures. The NWMP, tasked with bringing law and order to the region, were instrumental in asserting Canadian sovereignty, establishing positive relations with Indigenous communities, and facilitating the orderly settlement of the West. Their iconic red surge and disciplined approach earned them respect and helped forge a sense of Canadian identity and authority across the vast and often lawless territories. 
The NWMP's role in the early days of Western expansion was pivotal in establishing the foundations of modern policing and governance in Canada. In the late 1870s, Prime Minister John A. Macdonald introduced the National Policy, a comprehensive economic strategy designed to foster Canadian prosperity and independence. The policy's key components included protective tariffs to nurture domestic industries, the promotion of immigration to settle the West and develop agriculture, and the continued expansion of the railway system to facilitate trade and mobility. This policy aimed to create a self-sufficient, industrially diverse Canada that could compete on the global stage, reducing reliance on British imports and countering the economic pull of the United States. The national policy played a crucial role in shaping Canada's economic landscape, contributing to the growth of manufacturing sectors in Ontario and Quebec and the agricultural development of the prairies. The vision of a transcontinental railway, the Canadian Pacific Railway, CPR, was driven by the dual goals of economic development and national unity. The immense challenge of constructing a railway across the rugged Canadian landscape was undertaken in the wake of Confederation, embodying the spirit of the new nation. The project was fraught with financial difficulties, labor shortages, and engineering challenges, but it was propelled forward by the promise of connecting distant communities, facilitating trade, and securing Canada's claim over its Western territories. The completion of the CPR in 1885 was a monumental achievement that symbolized the binding of Canada from east to west, fostering economic growth and facilitating the settlement of the western provinces. The late 19th century gold rushes in British Columbia and the Yukon were pivotal in shaping Canada's western frontier. The discovery of gold attracted thousands of prospectors, adventurers, and entrepreneurs, leading to rapid population growth and the establishment of boom towns. These gold rushes brought profound changes, including the displacement of indigenous peoples, the imposition of Canadian sovereignty in the far west, and the laying of the groundwork for infrastructure and governance in these regions. The economic boom facilitated by the gold rushes also contributed to Canada's emerging identity as a land of opportunity and prosperity, drawing international attention and investment. The period following the completion of the CPR saw an orchestrated effort by the Canadian government to populate the West, known as the immigration boom. This was motivated by the desire to cultivate the vast prairies and solidify Canadian sovereignty over its territories, particularly in the face of American expansionist threats. The government, in partnership with the CPR, embarked on aggressive advertising campaigns in Europe, offering incentives such as cheap land and travel subsidies. This campaign attracted a diverse wave of settlers from Eastern Europe, Scandinavia, and beyond, each bringing their own cultures, traditions, and agricultural practices. This mosaic of communities transformed the Canadian West, contributing to its economic development and cultural diversity. The Northwest Rebellion of 1885, led by Louis Riel and the Métis, was a culmination of grievances among the Metis and indigenous peoples in the Saskatchewan Territory. The Canadian government's failure to address the concerns of the Metis regarding land rights and the preservation of their way of life, coupled with the rapid influx of settlers following the railway's completion, created a volatile situation. The rebellion was a desperate attempt to assert rights and autonomy in the face of government inaction and broken promises, the swift and harsh response by the Canadian government leading to Riel's execution underscored the challenges of nation-building and the need for reconciliation and respect for minority rights. The Manitoba School's question in the 1890s exposed the tensions between linguistic and religious diversity and the principles of public education in Canada. The issue arose when the Manitoba government, responding to demographic shifts and economic pressures, abolished funding for Catholic schools, sparking a national controversy. This debate touched on fundamental issues of minority rights, religious freedom, and the role of the federal government in provincial affairs. The resolution of the Manitoba schools question, which ultimately saw a compromise that allowed for some public funding of religious schools, highlighted the challenges of balancing diversity with national unity and set important precedents for Canada's approach to education, bilingualism, and multiculturalism. The late 19th century saw Canada undergo significant industrialization and urbanization driven by technological advances, the expansion of the railway network, and the influx of capital and labor. 
Cities like Toronto and Montreal emerged as industrial centers, attracting workers from rural areas and immigrants seeking opportunities. This period marked a shift in Canada's economy from primarily agricultural to industrial, with the growth of manufacturing, mining, and services sectors. Urbanization also brought social challenges, including labor unrest, housing shortages, and public health issues, which would shape the political and social landscape of the 20th century. The passing of the Yukon Territory Act in 1898 was a direct response to the Klondike Gold Rush and the explosive growth in the region's population. The act established the Yukon as a separate territory, providing it with a semblance of local governance to better manage the needs of its rapidly growing population. This legislative move was crucial for the administration of justice, land claims, and the provision of public services in a region overwhelmed by the influx of prospectors and entrepreneurs. The Yukon Territory Act marked an important step in Canada's territorial evolution, recognizing the unique challenges and opportunities presented by its northern regions. The closing decades of the 19th century were marked by Canada's gradual move towards greater autonomy within the British Empire. The British North America Act of 1867 had established Canada as a self-governing dominion, but key aspects of foreign policy and constitutional matters remained under British control. Through a series of conferences, negotiations, and legal changes, Canada began to assert its independence, culminating in events like the Bering Sea Dispute and the participation in the Second Boer War, which allowed Canada to step onto the world stage as a distinct entity. This period laid the groundwork for the eventual full legal independence achieved with the Statute of Westminster in 1931. Our journey from the Act of Union in 1840 to the establishment of the Yukon Territory in 1898 has unveiled the multifaceted saga of Canada's formation. Through acts of unification, rebellion, and visionary policies, Canada emerged from a collection of disparate colonies into a nation marked by diversity, resilience, and ambition. Each chapter of our story not only narrates historical events, but also reflects the enduring challenges and aspirations of a country striving to define itself. As we close this chapter of our time-traveling exploration, we carry forward the legacy of those who built Canada, a legacy of courage, innovation, and unity. Thank you for joining me on this profound journey through Canada's past. Let's continue to explore, learn, and appreciate the stories that weave the fabric of nations. Until our next adventure, keep the spirit of curiosity alive and remember that history is not just about the past, it's a beacon that guides us into the future. Farewell, fellow explorers, and may the tales of yesteryear inspire us to build a better tomorrow. And so, we conclude the first chapter of our journey through Canada's rich history. But the story doesn't end here. This was just the beginning of a saga that continues to unfold, a narrative of resilience, diversity, and progress. Stay tuned for the next episode in our four-part series, where we'll delve even deeper into the events that have sculpted Canada into the vibrant nation it is today. Your engagement fuels our passion for sharing these stories. So if you've enjoyed this voyage through time, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Together, let's keep exploring the past to understand the present and inspire the future. Thank you for watching, and we can't wait to see you in the next installment of Canada's Historical Odyssey.